As promised, we are back with the 2023 BMW M2. I'm here with Substitute Topher. And a helmet. And a helmet. Yep. <laughs> We're at M1 Concours in Pontiac, Michigan, and we figured we'd do a quick track test on this today. I uploaded a review on this M2 a few days ago, so be sure to check that out for the full driving impressions. Today's video, though, is gonna be focused on high-performance driving and seeing how this thing holds up on a racetrack. So, some overview, some basic information. This is painted in Zandvoort blue. It has 453 horsepower, 406 pound-feet of torque from a three-liter twin-turbo inline-six S58 motor, six-speed manual transmission, 20-inch wheels in the back with 285s, 19-inch wheels in the front with 275s, I believe. Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tires, steel brakes. Starting price, around $63,000. This has a very expensive M carbon package on it. $9,900 for a carbon roof. M carbon seats, which are adjustable, which is nice. They're actually quite comfortable. And uh, some carbon bits in the interior. Chris, let's hop inside. Sounds good. And go for a drive. <laughs> So, getting into the M2 with a helmet, a little bit different than getting into the M2 without a helmet. We most recently drove the M4 CSL, and uh, Chris, you can explain this Yeah, we did to take us. these bits out, which are removable in these seats, but also the full bucket seats you get in the CSL, and that's important because you can't adjust those seats without having spanners. Luckily, these, though, there's a switch. There's a motor so and a back. switch. So you don't have to take these out, but it's nice that they give you the option because some people yeah. are very serious about this yep. and they want to have their helmet sit back just that much further. It's nice to be able to take that out. It's just two screws underneath here. That yes. Pop out. Yeah, it's two little, yeah. um, what, Torx? Yeah, Torx bits. Yeah. So. Cool. It's easy. Pops right out. <sighs> Settings. One thing I like about the M2 and a lot of M cars is that when you start it up, it'll default to the previous M mode, M1, M2 button that you had engaged, if you had it engaged. So I have my M2 setting set to the most aggressive setting, M2 and an M2. Engines in Sport Plus, gear shift assistant is on, and chassis is in Sport Plus, steering's in comfort for lightness, brake is in Sport, and I have DSC off, though you can adjust with a number of different M traction control settings, which is actually quite a good system. Yeah, and you can turn on an M drift analyzer. Yeah, yeah. we could, I don't know. I don't know if we're going to analyze yeah, drifts we probably today. Shouldn't analyze we promised anything. we wouldn't ruin a set of tires. <laughs> and BMW let's, said, go have fun. Let's keep our promise. Yeah, we'll keep our promise. <laughs> so we'll do a couple little skids, but uh, mostly let's just see how this thing does. All right. Oh, one more thing uh, for track driving. I'm going to go into my M mode here and you can select a number of different gauge clusters. There's road, there's sport, but let's do track because what that does is it disables the intelligent safety system, turns off your infotainment screen, shows you some relevant information like PSI and tire temperature, and then just kind of gives you a different head-up display, which is a tachometer, which is all very useful. Do we have launch control? Probably oh, not, sure. with DSC off. Yeah, you probably have to be inside DSC Sport. That's okay though. We have burnout. Yeah. <laughs> Proper power and torque. Yeah, just driving this thing on the street this week, it's a tricky car to find the limits of on the road. Out on track here, it definitely feels a little bit more at home. There's just so much grip. So because this M2 is all new for the 2023 model year, we have to make some comparisons between this and the old M2 competition. Basically, how I can sum things up, this new car is a little bit higher performance, a little bit easier to drive, more buttoned down. It's not as flickable and lively around a corner. Honestly, it feels a lot like the new M4. Makes a good sound. I like this S58. <laughs> Hero stuff 
right there, <laughs> channeling my inner Chris Harris. <laughs> it does make you feel like a great driver though. And it's just a bit more approachable of a car. How are the steel brakes? The steel brakes feel pretty good. M1 is a tough track on brakes, so we will put them to their limits here today. I'm actually really starting to enjoy the six-speed manual. We spent quite a bit of time in the M2 at Road America around an autocross course a few weeks ago. And the eight-speed auto was kind of the unsung hero there. It just felt so much faster, so much more lively. But I actually am really starting to like this manual transmission. The theme of this car this week for me has been, didn't like it at first, and it's really starting to grow on me a lot, actually. Still don't like the way it looks. Said it looks like it's having an allergic reaction, and I stand by that. That was a first for me earlier hearing that. But it does, doesn't it? It's like Will Smith and Hitched. Uh, yeah. That's okay though, it drives so well, and when you're inside it, you don't have to look at it. Let's see if I can get my line right around here once. <laughs> This is more fun to drive than the M4 manual base for less money. Feels a little bit quicker too. Definitely bit, feels quicker. Yeah, more like low down torque. The M4 manual base just it was so peaky, it, it felt kind of underpowered, honestly. Unlike the uh, auto, the eight speed auto M4. stays cool we're just sitting at about uh, 210 200 degrees it's actually running cooler now than it was on the way here in traffic yeah brakes feel good speed and gear. I like that. Get on the power early here. It's a good time. I think if you wanted to go faster and really unleash the performance of this S58, you'd go for the 8-speed auto, but as a driver's tool and a bit more of an engaging experience. If you want that manual shifting, you want something to do between stoplights, this is kind of the way to go. Very braced over here as well. <laughs> yeah, how are these seats working for you? Very nice. <sighs> we should have had a handbrake. Build them to have a handbrake. It did, yeah. Okay. It did. Yeah, the old M2 was charming. It was really an exciting car to drive. It was a little bit scary. It was kind of twitchy. You felt the short wheelbase. This, you don't get that same short wheelbase sweetness. It used to kind of, you'd get on power in the old M2 and it would kind of torque and yaw and the rear end would move around and yeah. It was like just, just barely holding on for grip. And this new M2 is kind of unflappable in the way that it puts its performance and power down. Yeah, well, you just drove an E46 M3. I did. Is oh. this not just like the same size? <laughs> it's the same size and it's like 500 pounds heavier. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 3,800 pound curb weight here. You you don't feel it really. Like it just, the it's, it's kind of like the GTR in that the weight helps put traction down and helps sure. put you know weight down on those tires and really allows them to grip but i think you'd feel it in consumables in tires and brakes if you did track this regularly but one thing i will say because chris hasn't spent a lot of time in this car yet this week yeah 
I've had the last few days in it. This car does get better the harder you drive it. So it takes, it's a bit of a learning curve to drive it smoothly on the street, but you can. And I do enjoy the manual for that reason. It's just nice to kind of live with, it's comfortable. But you start hustling this thing and it just gets better and better and better. And that's always been the mark of a good M car. So the more I've spent time in this car, the more I, I like it. I like it a lot. I think it's my, it's still my favorite manual M car. I don't know if I get the manual or if I get the eight speed. Yeah, they've only got two choices now for manual M cars. M3, yeah. M4 and this. Yeah, that's right. What do you think about the M2 based on what you've, because you've, you've spent quite a bit of time in it in the autocross. Um, yeah, I did a few laps at autocross. I did a street drive in it. Um, filmed that for my channel. But oh yeah. I was under the impression after hearing from a couple of our colleagues and just other people that went and drove it at the launch that it wasn't a very good car and then I got in it at Mama and I was like, oh, I actually really like this. I like the manual, I agree with your sentiments there. And now that I've ridden, around, ridden in it around the track, I mean, it's pretty dang impressive and I'm a pretty big fan of it. I'm excited to spend a few days in it this week. It's funny, you, me, Tedward, Charlie, our takeaway from Mama was, oh, the M2 was surprisingly good. Yeah. I think a lot of people got into this car initially and you know, at the press launch, you spend three or four hours with the car. Yeah. And my first impressions on this weren't great. Like I, I kind of first day I was like, meh, old M2 is better. Right. And then I spent some more time with it and it's more comfortable. The tech is better. It's a nicer interior space. It feels like a more premium product for the money. Yeah. And then when you push it, it does get really good. It just kind of looks, <sighs> It should, they should have made it look better. It went from being like the best looking car BMW has made in a long time to... I don't Will know. Smith having an allergic reaction. Yeah, exactly. Well, I just think that the new 2 Series in general is just a really great platform. It like, is. I'm a big fan of the M240i. I think that's a fabulous car. Yeah. So I was excited for the M2 to, to finally be released and I'm, I'm pretty happy with what they put together with the platform that was available. So. We even loved the 230i. The 230i? Didn't we have that here? Yeah, we brought it out here oh, with yeah. the BRZ. That's right. It was that like was fast, fun. it was fun, it was yeah. clickable, it had a rear diff, like it was awesome. That's right. That was a really cool little I was wondering car. why this felt familiar. Yeah. I was trying to figure it out. <laughs> Chris doesn't really wake up until about 11 a.m. No, it's, it's I'm, eight, I'm still in eco mode. 8.20. So yeah. <laughs> still in eco mode. <laughs> uh, okay, well, and also, you know, looks are subjective. Sure. I think this does look better in certain colors. Um, like Vanta Black would look really good on this. Mm -hmm. Why, because it would, it would hide the lights. <laughs> I'm a little bit harsh, but just because I love the looks of the old M2 so much. But ultimately, it's such a good car to drive. It's a bit more grown up. I don't think that's a bad thing. It's a bit easier to push to the limits. I don't think that's a bad thing either. Um, you can still get an old M2 comp with a warranty. So if that's more your flavor, go for it. But honestly, they've held their value so much that the prices aren't that different between that and one of these that's new. If you don't get the $10,000 M carbon package, yeah. this is a pretty good deal. I mean, it's as good, if not better than the M4 to drive. I'd have this over the M4. I'd have this over an M4. Yeah. Yeah. The back seats are a bit of a bummer because there's no headroom anymore. You have leg room though. You have leg room. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's so if you have a, a very pitch. short torso and long legs, then you could go up in the back. That's right. Or if you have children that have very long legs and short torsos, then you could consider that. Or just short children. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or normal sized children. That's true. Children yeah. are usually smaller. But usually, yeah. yeah. Okay. We'll end on that note. All right. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Uh, we're going to go drive the Type R some. Brought that out here, too, because why not? Ah, just kind of a tight squeeze between here and here. I saw you bopping your head getting in. I did bop my head getting in. Let's see how the tires fared. They look fine. They look pretty good. Yeah. You did a good job warming them up before you did. went Chris Harris. Yeah. Um, I don't have a lot of confirmation on this firsthand, but I heard via watching some other videos, uh, Throttle House videos actually, that the old M2 had a lot of wheel hop off the line. Oh, and this can just like do burnouts and 
Something to do with the differential mounts. This has more of them. Okay. So that's nice. You could do big smoky burnouts. And yeah. that was like a, a big smoky burnout into like a second that launch was gear excellent. peel. Yeah, that yeah, was good. This does have launch control too, but honestly, I'd rather just roast them. Yeah. Like your solo 2017 sticker. Shows how long it's been since I've done an autocross. Yeah, it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah. Should we show the engine and then uh, wrap things up? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, why not? I've got to say, BMW is just absolutely killing it with their engines these days. Between the B58 and this S58, ah, they're nailing it. I wish they would give, they still do it on individual cars, but I wish they still had the plaque that told you what color the car was under the hood. Oh yeah. You only get that now in individual cars and they put it like on this thing. Okay. Uh, mm. I just thought that was a cool that was thing neat. that BMW used to do and they kind of stopped that with the last gen. It also would be nice for the $10,000 carbon package to get some carbon fiber bits in here too. Yeah. Some bracing. Still a decent looking plastic engine bay. 0W30 oil. 2W30. Yeah. Bonus footage. Um, it started raining, so we thought we'd hop back in the M2 and see how it does in the wet. See if we can keep it in a straight line. So the M2 is still kind of a tricky car to drift. Yeah. Especially with like no runoff. press the infotainment while under hard acceleration. <laughs> do you remember those old videos those guys used to do where they tape money to the dash? Yeah, that was like Carol Shelby or something that started that back yeah, in the day. And they accelerate if you could grab money you could keep it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs>
in good fun. <laughs> I love that. Uh, and it doesn't wear out the tires in the wet, which is yeah. which is great. We told BMW we take good care of the tires, and I feel like we did a, did a good job so far. Yeah, responsible sliding. Yes. We've run out of things to say, so that means it's the end of the video. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Take care. Stay tuned for more this week and the Type R drive. Oh, and also check out M1 Concourse. Cool place. They've got a lot of cars here that you can drive if you want to book an event with them. They have lots of just fun things to do. It's a great car culture and community. They have car shows. They have garages for sale, memberships. Cool place to have in Detroit right off of Woodward Avenue. Cool spot.